Today, we're going to talk about the time timer. And this is one of my favorite little gadgets that I use to keep myself on track and on time for different things. And so really, it seems like a really simple concept. Like what exactly is a time timer? And there's many different versions. This is called the Time Timer Mod, M-O-D. And anyways, we'll get a little bit more into why I chose this one. But all time timers are, they were actually made for school children, I think, of which I was once one. And they're made so that people could learn how to figure out time passing. Because if you tell like a five-year-old, or if you tell me, you know, an adult with ADHD, um, you know, by the way, you have to be there in five minutes or, you know, after 10 minutes. Time passing is kind of this weird thing. And I think I'm in this time space continuum warp where when I get into something, I just lose track of time. And whether that's surfing the web or actually pounding out some HTML or editing photos, sometimes I just kind of lose track of time a little bit too easily. And so what this thing does is so simple. All you do turn the knob and for, you know, there's five minutes, there's 10 minutes, there's 15 minutes. And it's so visual. Once the red portion disappears, that amount of time is done. And so for a kid, if you say, oh yeah, by the way, you have, you can maximum play video games for 15 minutes. You set the time timer and they know without having to guess how many minutes are left. When the red disappears, you're out of luck. You're out of time. Okay, cool. So that's as simple as it is. And really, what piqued my interest was when I heard that the um, Google Accelerated product team was using time timers in at, as a reference for their teams. So what this whole Accelerated Learning um, Accelerated product team was based on was getting people into a room, forcing them to super create stuff and just push out products in a very efficient manner and. One of their best tools besides a whiteboard was the time timer because it kept everybody focused on the task at hand. And I don't know if you're like me, but I used to think that, oh yeah, I can just multitask. I can like do multiple things and juggle everything at once. I'm actually really bad at that. And so what I found much easier for myself is to single task and keep focused on a single item um, at hand. But I really can dive a little bit too deep and I can easily get distracted. But if I give myself a time, then it's much easier for me to stay focused. I don't know why. It's just mental. I'm just mental. Okay. So what I do is I use a modified Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro technique is just like 25 minutes of focused work, five minute break, 25 minutes of focused work, five minute break. And usually during that five minute break, as some of you know, who followed our blog, from many eons ago, I will go do something physical, whether it's a couple of sets of workout or, you know, a couple push-ups or just walk around, whatever. So just um, reset myself, right? And the cool thing about 25-minute chunks of work is that it's short enough to make me feel rushed to get something useful done so I can track it because I like to track things. And two, it's not too long that I start to wander off track, all right? Now, this is just something that I love to do. And, you know, you can look more about the Pomodoro technique um, online. I'm not really a stickler for its, you know, to make it perfect because I think every four sessions of 25 minutes of work, you're supposed to make a longer break, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not too anal about my Pomodoro technique. It just lets me focus for a certain work period. Okay. Now let's talk about why this is useful. Okay. So many uses. I already talked about Pomodoro technique and that's the office productivity. The second one is as a family, we were consistently rushing out the door, right? And and so what I started doing in the morning, getting out of bed isn't the problem. For some reason, it was always getting our bags packed, getting the lunch ready and getting out the physical door. So I started setting the time timer when I got downstairs and lo and behold, when the time timer went off, it's like Pavlov's dog. My kids started racing, getting their books ready, made sure that all of their breakfast stuff was put in the dishwasher and we weren't late and fe feeling rushed anymore, which is really great. So it kind of helps prevent tardiness if you are tardy like my family. Mm -hmm. No bueno. Now, 
I also use it, like I mentioned before, to limit screen time. And here's an important tip, and we're going to go over some more tips as well. But once it's set, the rule in our house is that nobody can touch it. Because I used to give my kids like digital timers, one each, so that they could time themselves. Let's say 20 minutes was my arbitrary number for video game time, right? Then they've got to turn off. Well, kids are pretty smart. And they would go for a washroom break. Or they'd say, oh, you know what? Setting up the video game or Wii doesn't count because I'm not actually playing. (laughs) Um, So, you know, stuff like that. And they would often conveniently, one of my children would often conveniently forget to restart the digital timer, right? So anyways, the simplicity of the time timer, there's no pause button, right? And so as long as we set the rule as, hey, one, you can't touch it after it's been set by a parent. And then two, um, yeah. What it is is what it is until mommy and daddy say different. (laughs) Tyranny of the parent. I love it. Okay. Well, the other thing is that I use it as a very simple kitchen timer. And so it's not going to be super accurate and is definitely not seconds accurate. But if you're just looking for a quick way to check meat in the oven or whatever, you can carry this with you. I love it. And it just helps me keep my brain more focused on stuff that matters versus the clock. (laughs) Awesome. So that's about it and as simple as it gets. So there's a couple of pros and cons and there's many different models. So make sure you use the link if you want to use the latest versions because there's some older models that I cannot recommend. And older models, you'll probably see them in like kids' classrooms because <laughs> I've seen them in kids' classrooms too. But anyways, so pros, super easy to use, just turny turny the dial dial. And of course, you can change it to anything you want, right? And so We already mentioned there's a billion uses, and I'm sure you can find some more. Share your uses with me if you have one, okay? That'd be awesome. And also, the cool thing about it is that the alarm isn't too terribly annoying. It's just shy of wanting to throw it away. So it's got like, I'm going to just set this right there. and It's just like four beeps, and then it stops. So usually, I usually kind of grab it by the fourth beep and want to toss it somewhere, and by then, it's already over. And of course, on the back of this one, at least, there is a switch to turn off so it's silent. I do find that even if this is sitting right beside me on my computer, on my desk, that I lose track of time and I don't notice that there's no red anymore and I just keep on going in life. So I do like using the audio timer and it's not too annoying. So, it's, you know, whether you use it or not, up to you. All right. Now, cons. This thing costs like a lot of money for what it is. It doesn't really actually even tell the time, right? It's not actually a clock. Odd, right? And the other thing is, I find that um, there's different models that don't have a protective cover and it's just a piece of paper with the numbers written on it on the front. And so you can literally rip it and you can literally... See? Yeah, almost annoying. Almost annoying. Okay, but you can rip the piece of paper, the whole front face. It gets dirty because it's just paper, but they have new models. This is the mod, M-O-D, and it has a plastic cover on the front there, all right? And it has a little spinny dial on the front. I also, on the links in the description, I do have another model, which is taller, that also has plastic on the front and a similar knob. So that's really cool too. So those are the two models I would recommend for longevity. And um, the other thing is it's not accurate, like I mentioned. You can't just say, oh, I want exactly one minute and know that it'll be 60 seconds. It's not going to be. So realistically, if you're needing accuracy, use a digital timer or use your iPhone. It doesn't matter. But this is way faster to set than an iPhone, although not as accurate. Cool. Now, a couple of tips and tricks that I do recommend. Oh, where did I put them? Oh, I didn't didn't put them on. Oh, shh, don't look because I'm about to change this up for a second here Uh, what have i done what have i done okay what no tips and tricks where's my tips and tricks i don't have any tips and tricks bad dave oh bummer man okay sorry well my tips and tricks were one when you set it don't let the kids touch it because they'll always be fiddling it but also personally i make it a note when i'm working on the pomodoro technique to not also fiddle with it either so if you get distracted who cares you just set another time Wait for the next time to make it work. You don't have to be perfect. It's just time. It just keeps on passing. We can't stop it anyways, Mm -hmm. right? 
set and forget. Now, the second thing that I do recommend is using lithium batteries, okay? So this little guy only takes one AA battery. And the reason why I choose lithium batteries is because I don't want it to, one, corrode, and two, this has been two years and I've never changed the battery. It's like, what? Lithium batteries last for evers, okay? And um, yeah, it's just super nice and easy. Uh, why is it called the mod, you might think? Well, let me show you. And this isn't something that I would, would recommend to buy, but you can change or you can purchase different colors of this. So look at this. I'm just, oh, it's a naked, a naked time timer. Hey, don't look. Oh, look, it's it's kind of shy. Okay, but yeah, so you can just put make it different colors. And so if you even want to get one for different teams in your office or different kids, <laughs> then you can make sure that they don't steal each other's, right? This is the green. It comes in blue. I forget what other colors. I think there's like a reddish one, but um, pretty funky looking. And of course, the standard one, I think the cheapest one on Amazon, at least, I've got links in the description, is the gray. And it looks pretty acceptable in any office, I think. It's pretty subdued. And it's not too big to make you worry about, what is that thing? But for kids, they have the bigger versions, which are kind of nice if you needed to put them in a room where everybody can see it. Cool. Awesome. So that's about it. Do you guys have anything? I'd love to hear how you guys use time and keep track of it all because um, this is just one little tool in my arsenal of productivity tips and how we can keep our family focused on what matters most and it's time right cool all right i'm gonna get back to some comments ben jamin bad boy okay anyways um sherry says going to have to watch this later when i get home see there you go thanks sherry if you're watching this in the rebroadcast love ya okay um, Benjamin says, cocaine helps multitasking. Next. Okay. Kim, time blocks. Yes. I'm not sure. Yes, time blocks. Totally. So Pomodoro technique. So yeah, chunking out our time during the day helps a lot. Tia, awesome. Buffy, hello. Good to have you here. So yeah, there's not too much here, but if you are watching on the rebroadcast and if I add anything, I always have links and uh, full write-up in the link in the description. So make sure to check that out as well. Hey, Herman, good to have you here. Damon, good to see you here too. But for now, let's go to the thought of the day. And that is, the greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change his future by merely changing his attitude. Thanks, Oprah. There we go. And uh, so thanks guys for watching. There's one last question I'll get to. Leonardo, what camera are you live videoing from? And I think I've... Oh, you know what? I'm going to do that as another live stream. And so I can sh to, um, get a gear list of you for all my current live streaming stuff. Cool. Great idea. Thanks, Leonardo. Um, Miguel says, with Motiboto, I have all the time now. Oh, Miguel, you sweetie, you. But yeah, Motiboto rocks. Check it out. So... Thanks for watching, guys. God bless. And if you guys would like to share, subscribe, and support, check out Chinese Secrets, spelled really weird, dot com. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.